Hey guys, welcome to PV Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to identify a bad PCV valve on your Mark V GTI or GLI. That's the 2.0T FSI motor, the early motor. And then I'm going to show you how to replace the PCV valve as well. Stick around. All right, so just a really quick background on this car. I picked this thing up for a good deal. It didn't really run. It kind of ran okay when I would unhook the MAF sensor, which is this guy right here. And then the rest of the time it would kind of really struggle to idle. When I got the car home and started trying to diagnose things, I noticed that this aftermarket intake here had a little port here, which normally I think would be like a recirculation for the diverter valve. And it just had this little pod filter thing on it, which means that a whole bunch of air was getting into the intake here after the mass airflow sensor. And if you're not familiar, the mass airflow sensor is how the ECU for the engine knows how much air is going into the engine. So then it knows how much fuel to add to make the thing run properly. And when you have a big source of incoming air, which would have been this uh, port down here, bypassing that math, it only reads a little bit of air going in, but there's a whole bunch of air going in here, adds not enough fuel, and then it has to correct and it really messes up the fuel trims. So first thing I did is I capped that off inside. I know I've got the little pod filter on there and the little hose clamp just to seal everything, but that's capped off. Same thing with this extra intake tube here. The pods that were on this originally were all coming apart inside. So I just stuck this on here for diagnosing purposes. All right, now when I did that, uh, the fuel maps kind of adjusted, everything got a lot better. Now it was drivable where before it would stall all the time. And that really made a huge difference. However, it's still not quite right. Now, one major thing that lets me know that the PCV is an issue, codes keep coming up in the ECU uh, for excessive lean condition. So basically it's trimming the fuel maps, trying to get closer to a perfect air fuel ratio. And it's doing that using the oxygen sensor on the back. So sometimes you get codes for oxygen sensors, not right. Uh, but a lot of times you'll get like uh, excessive lean condition or running too lean, things like that. Now, I'll start the car up and then we're gonna have a look at another big way to tell that this is a PCV issue. All right, so now we're idling. You can see it's idling actually pretty decent. Um, but like I say, because this thing's had a bad PCV and these other air leaks for so long, the ECU's really adapted to that and it's still reading from the math, but it's compensated so much to try and make the mixture correct on the exhaust side of this that it's hiding the fact that the PCV is kind of bad. So what I want to show you guys, I'm going to take my microphone here and hopefully you can listen. I'm just going to pull the dipstick out. Now hopefully you heard that hiss of air because there's a lot of vacuum in the crankcase right now. So as soon as I pull that dipstick tube out, you heard that hiss and I'll show you guys same thing for the oil fill cap. And it's actually it's tough to turn because the vacuum is sucking it down so much. And then when I pull it off. Now you heard that hiss of air there when I pulled the cap off. But also you notice when I pull that cap off, the engine's running exactly the same. Meaning all that air that's coming through the PCV and going straight into the intake without being measured by the mass airflow sensor isn't upsetting the engine because it's compensated for that bad PCV so well. Now, if I put this back on and I'll shut the engine off so we can talk about it a little bit more. Okay, now you might be thinking to yourself, well, what do I care if that's leaking because the thing's running okay? Now, some of the symptoms you'll get, you'll get excessive oil consumption because it's sucking full intake uh, vacuum on the whole crankcase. So it's gonna pull a lot of oil mist and vapor into the intake so it'll uh, really increase the carbon buildup in the intake, which is really bad on these motors already to begin with. And you're going to, like I say, get oil consumption issues because it's gonna be burning a lot of oil. The other things that'll happen uh, drivability wise, you'll get, especially at small throttle angles, you won't get very good uh, response from the motor. And then you can get a check engine light, you can get all kinds of codes for lean condition or um, you know, lean limit exceeded, all kinds of stuff like that. Now, just to solve all those issues, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and replace that PCV valve. Now, a lot of people will say, only replace these with OEM parts. That's not a bad idea. I think some of the aftermarket 
high quality brands are okay as well. What you do want to stay away from is the cheap stuff because either they won't work properly right out of the box or uh, you'll replace them and then you'll be right back in the same kind of problems in a couple of weeks because that diaphragm in there will fail as well. What I've got here is I've got a Febby part. I'm a fan of these. I always like their stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with that. Now the only tools you need to do this job, you need a Torx to get these bolts out. These are T25. I've also seen T20 bolts holding the PCV valve on. And in my case, I'm gonna use a mechanics pick also on these hose connections, just to get the little tabs over the lip. Just makes it easier to get those hoses off. They can get very brittle and easy to break. So you wanna be super careful with them. Now we've got two hoses going into the PCV. This guy here goes right to the intake manifold. And we just gotta pop that guy off. And then there's another hose in the back here, kind of tough to see, but that one goes down to the crankcase. And this one I can tell somebody's already uh, been messing with it. It's broken here a little bit, so I'm gonna use my pick just to be very careful. There's like four little hooks, sort of at uh, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. So you just gotta work them off and be real careful with that hose so we don't break anything or at least not worse than it's already broken. And there we go. That's my second hose off. And now I'm gonna come in here and remove my four T25 bolts. The long reach Torx here makes a big difference, makes my life easier. And then this guy should just come right off. So this is our old PCV valve here. Now there is a process to check these kind of manually and there, it involves blowing or sucking on these nipples here, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not sure what the proper answer is, but I'm sure you could figure it out if you wanted to look it up. But the new parts, not super expensive. In my mind, you might as well just do that maintenance anyways. Now the other thing we wanna do is just pull this gasket out as well. So I'm just gonna use my pick and then pull that gasket out and grab our new valve. And I'm gonna start by putting my new gasket in here. Now it really only goes in one way. So have a look there. Slide that guy into place. And then we can grab our new PCV valve here and throw that guy on as well. Again, being careful with those hoses because they can be brittle and breaking one of them will make you have a bad day pretty quickly. Now I am going to start my screws with my driver here, but I'm not going to put much pressure on them. So these screws here, they just go into the fairly soft plastic of the valve cover there. So if you try and get in there, you hit this thing accidentally with a couple of Duggas, you're gonna be stripping out that valve cover and pretty much be up the creek. So you really don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna just run these in a little bit and then tighten them down by hand. And now finishing touches by hand, just cause like I say, you wanna be real careful that you don't strip these out. And realistically, they don't need to be crazy tight anyways because it has that nice big rubber gasket there, that orange gasket, which can take up quite a bit of play. So we just wanna make sure these are snug. And then we can hook our hoses back up. They just need to slide on and make sure you click them into place. And it's just that easy. So super easy job on that. We're all done here. All I'm gonna do is start the motor up again. Obviously, I don't have the engine cover on because I have this aftermarket intake here. So if you did have the proper engine cover on here, you'd have to undo that. Easiest way is just unplug your MAF sensor, undo the two spring clips there, and then lift it up off the, its little posts. And you can take that cover right off. Oh yeah, you have to undo the, uh, if you still have it, because a lot of them are broken. But if you still have your air intake here, you need to undo the two screws that hold it as well. Um, and then that should be it.
All right, well, better than I expected. I kind of thought it was gonna hesitate and stumble a little bit there, but uh, everything seems to be good. So now we've got our PCV valve replaced. And if we have a look at our oil filler cap, we'll see if it's still pulling a whole bunch of vacuum on the crankcase there. All right, so you guys heard that, I'm sure. When I pull that cap off, much less vacuum holding it on there. It came off quite easily this time. And as soon as I took that cap off, the engine started to really stumble and hesitate because now what's happening is uh, the PCV is keeping the pressure in the crankcase at the right amount, which means it's not pulling a ton of air through and you're not getting a bunch of air into the intake that's not going through the mass airflow sensor and then when I pull that cap off, well, all of a sudden it can rush a bit more air in and the reading then goes off. But now, when everything's running properly, with the cap on, it's not gonna set those codes in the ECU, won't turn on my check engine light, and it'll just drive so much better now. So one more time, if you have a listen, you can see it start to stumble. It's missing now, because now it's like messing it up. We put that cap back on, runs beautifully. All right, well, that's it, guys. Replaced our PCV valve here, super easy job to do. Definitely worth doing if it hasn't been serviced in a long time, you know, at least check it. And really, I just wanted to make this video because um, I find there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people seem to be under the impression that the crankcase is under full, like manifold vacuum all the time. And I get into these discussions quite often with people trying to diagnose drivability issues or trying to deal with those um, lean condition codes that they're getting and nobody thinks to look at the PCV, you know, and nobody seems to believe that that's the diagnostic procedure, even though, you know, you can check Volkswagen documentation. They talk about that quite a bit about how that, uh, vacuum should respond when you pull the cap off, things like that. So easy way to check it, easy part to replace, you know, hopefully that clears up some of the confusion about the PCV. It really takes care of a lot of drivability issues I find particularly with this motor um, when that PCV is, va is bad you get all kinds of weird drivability stuff and it's so easy to replace so go do yours see you guys